Hi everyone, Mark Metronik here, and I'm gonna show you a super quick tip that is awesome, totally, completely lossless, working with 32-bit raw layers and even 32-bit blending for dynamic range made so easy, it's just off the charts. I will refer to my video tutorial, Blending for Dynamic Range Made Easy Blend If, but also the ultimate quality workflow, Photoshop 32-bit raw layers, which as of the making of this video will be out very soon, but by the time you've watched this, it's probably out. The ultimate possible quality workflow. It's so exciting. I am going to leave so many questions unanswered, but just watch this. A lot of people struggle with blending for dynamic range, and many of the techniques that we use do more damage than most people would ever know. This is utterly lossless. 32-bit raw files and their computation is done in a space that has like four billion tones between black and white. And there is a superiority of quality there that is just unbeatable, especially if you're a printmaker, this is the only way to go. This is also taught on Robert Park and my The Ultimate Mastering Fine Art Printmaking Workshop, how to process totally lossless to get superior quality enlargements. So now the technique. We're in Lightroom. I've made the adjustments. In fact, there's a gradient over the sky trying to get the dynamic range under control. I'm using really punchy and poppy settings to have that clarity. I'm avoiding texture and clarity, and I'm relying on dehaze instead because texture and clarity both have a sharpening built into them that create artifacting, which hinders the ultimate quality of detail that you can get in the enlargement. But what I want is I want all this punch and all of this pop. This is a client's photo, but we want the full dynamic range at the same time. And at this point, it's just not possible in RAW. So watch this. First thing I'm going to do is open this up as a RAW layer in Photoshop. So it's 32-bit. So now we're in Photoshop as a RAW file. Smart objects and raw layers are two totally different things. This is a raw file in Photoshop. It's 32-bit. There's that little symbol on the right-hand corner letting you know that the raw file is a smart object. I really wish they would just call it a raw layer. Don't worry that it says 16-bit. That basically means that once it's flattened or rasterized, then it will become 16-bit. But at this point, it is 32-bit raw computation. Also, if you look down at the bottom left-hand corner where the data is, that data reflects a 16-bit rasterized file, not the 32-bit full-on data that we're actually working with here. 32-bit raw data is totally, completely lossless. Not like 16-bit, not like 8-bit. Now watch the technique. Duplicate the layer. The only way you can do it with the raw layers is to go to new smart object via a copy. All other ways will duplicate, but they'll be linked. And if you just one, the other one will be adjusted. So now we have two raw files on top of each other. Double click on one of them. Camera raw opens up. As many people know, the holy grail of contrast is that light slider, but it has a tendency to blow things out. We will pull that back. There it is. I'm going to go ahead and take this to zero for the highlights and take this down until the histogram backs off substantially from the right end. And we have absolutely no clipping. You will have noticed that saturation has come down a lot because in RGB, when you add contrast or decrease contrast, it also boosts saturation or decreases it. So I'm gonna increase the saturation by going back to the main panel I'll bring it up 20 points. Now let's hit OK. So here is a second 32-bit RAW file on top of the original RAW file, not rasterized yet. What I want from this layer is the highlights that are taken down. Then I want the middle tones and the shadows of the layer below it that has all that punch and that pop. 
So easy to blend. Watch this. You might not ever blend another way again. I'm going to come over here and just turn off the bottom layer for a second so you can see what it is that Blendif does. And then double click here. Blendif comes up. I'm going to pull this right here so you can see what's going on. Only pay attention to this one slider, this gradient right here. I'm doing it this way so you can see what happens. Grab the white side and there goes all of the highlights. Grab the left side though, and all the shadows are gonna disappear into the middle tones, and it's only gonna leave the highlights. Split the black slider so that you have a nice feather, and do something like this, 80 to around 220, and you have a very smooth, lossless blend of those healed or darkened highlights that are not blown out that are above the layer that has the blown out highlights and that's all you have to do so watch bright file healed highlight file double click blend if comes up take that black slider and move it to around 220-ish. Take the other slider, bring it around 80. Hit OK, and oh my goodness, it's all healed. It still needs a little more contrast, but boom. Absolute full dynamic range and completely and entirely lossless. Look at the histogram on the left-hand side. The red, green, and blue channel aren't anywhere close to clipping. If you had it in compact mode, it would look like that. There's room on the left, there's room on the right. So now how do we get that little bit of pop we need back that we lost because of the blend? First, let's rasterize or flatten the file if we want. Command Option Shift E or Control Alt Shift E for PC. Now we have a flattened rasterized 16-bit file that is pristine far better than any other blending method in terms of its cleanliness and losslessness. All computation was done in 32-bit, not 16-bit, and not 8-bit. If you wanted to, you could delete these two raw layers. And now what do we do? We just go to Levels, Image, Adjustment, Levels, and we can get the contrast back. If you hold Alt or Option down, move it in until you start seeing things clipping. Those are the things that are clipping, back it off. And that's as light as light can get. Maybe do a middle tone adjustment. And if you felt like your black could get blacker, you could push that. Or if you wanted it to actually get lighter, you could push that and boom, you have the absolute full dynamic range not one single pixel here in the highlights is blowing out. And yes, there are a few black pixels, but I would argue that there are a few areas that should be black in this image. So easy, totally lossless, 32-bit raw layers. This is only the tip of the iceberg of raw blending where we are getting no degrading of the image, no loss of quality, a total superiority of quality like we have never seen before. I hope that helps you. All the best to you and your family and great light to you.